Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Angela Osterreicher, and I'm from the WHA Virtual Library. And we're here today to talk about what resources we've pulled together uh, in the virtual library dealing with coronavirus disease. Just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. This uh, session will be recorded and should be available on our YouTube channel by the end of the week. I'll send out a link to everyone that's registered uh, for today's session and feel free to share that with colleagues. I'll also send out a copy of the slide deck as well so you don't feel you have to take down all the details. Um, and if you have a question, I'll try to keep my eye on the chat, just put it in the chat. But I always leave time at the end. If you have a question, uh, we'll uh, take a few minutes then uh, to answer them. So the objectives for today is to give you a bit of, first of all, I'll give you a bit of an overview of the WHA Virtual Library in case you're not familiar with us give you a quick orientation to our COVID-19 resources and we've put them under those headings of point of care, research, public resources and books that we have. I also want to talk a little bit about search strings and what you can do with them um, and also uh, fake news or misinformation being able to identify that. So to start with, we are the virtual library for the WRHJ, and we provide access to electronic resources and library services for the WRHJ staff, eligible community health agencies, eligible personal care homes. Uh, we provide access to an array of electronic resources, so that's e-books, e-journals, and databases. And we still provide our library services, such as we will do literature searches for you. Uh, we will do uh, take care of document delivery. Uh, you can send us your document delivery requests. If we don't actually own it, we will then go looking for it in other libraries and send it to you. And we do education and training sessions to uh, show you how to use the databases, how to use various services and resources that we have. So to find the COVID-19 resource page, you would navigate to our home page. You have the URL there. And as I said before, we'll be sending this out so you'll have it handy. Always recommend that you uh, bookmark this or shortcut it on your desktop so it's easy access for you to our, our library portal. When you're on the home page, you look for this image on the right hand side. And all you have to do is click on the heading, check out our COVID-19 resources and that will take you to this page with those headings that I mentioned before so our COVID-19 resources for point of care research public and our books so for the clinical or point of care resources we've uh, pulled together resources that hopefully tell you what coronavirus is uh, what is the current outbreak update how is it transmitted what are the symptoms what are the treatment options and what is the best evidence. So if you click on the resources for point of care heading, this is the page that you come to. Here we've tried to find guidelines, evidence summaries, as well as updates from various institutions, associations, and government agencies. We've also pulled information from specific clinical groups, nurses, physicians, pediatricians, pharmacists. And we've also included open access resources. So these are all handy here for you to, to click on and uh, review the information that is available there. We won't look at them all today, but if we take a look at the first one there, Government of Canada, uh, this has information specifically for healthcare professionals. So what you need to know. So causative agents, signs and symptoms, transmission and so forth. Another good page uh, for clinicians is the treatment guidelines put out by the National Institute of Health, which is part of the US Department of Health and Human Services, a huge biomedical research agency in the States. So if you go to their webpage, you can get an overview of what the epidemi epidemiology and clinical presentations of COVID are, how to care for critically ill patients, which would include things like uh, information control, hemodynamics, 
more therapeutic management of adults with COVID, so forth. So another great resource uh, for clinicians. Uh, this resource here, Lippincott, a publisher, and we'll be looking at a few more of these in a, in a few minutes. Uh, a lot of the pro publishers have pulled together resources and made them freely available to people during the pandemic. So on Lippincott, they have an excellent resource. You can get vaccine updates there. Uh, they also pro provide access to some of the resources that you normally uh, would have to have a subscription to. So we are fortunate that we have a, a subscription to both of these, UpToDate and Lexicomp. Lexicomp um, is the clinical drug information. Uh, and UpToDate is a, a point of care tool for clinicians. Uh, they are providing access to all of their information on uh, available, but just information uh, about COVID-19. And also they've curated information specific uh, for epidemiologists, researchers, as well as clinicians and nurses. So you can go straight there to resources that they have uh, provided for your group. Uh, a lot of their inf information is open access, but they also provide access to a lot of their articles from specific journals that they have covering things like nursing, heart, anesthesiology, public health, orthopedics, and pregnancy. So a good uh, yeah, information hub. Now, resources for researchers, you would click on the next heading there uh, that you see on the right-hand side here, and you come to this page. Here we find journal and publisher portals. Much like the Lippincott that I just mentioned to you, there are many research and information hubs out there now that are committed to sharing, data sharing info during the pandemic. So these information hubs have been created by various uh, organizations and the purpose is to provide evidence for decision makers to use to meet the challenges created by COVID-19. So the first one there in the middle there, Guide to COVID-19 Evidence Sources, that's actually uh, put out by McMaster University, uh, McMaster Health Forum. Uh, and what they've done there is they've developed a rapid response model to provide decision makers with evidence. So if you go to that page, you can find a lot of their information that they've already um, earmarked as being evidence-based uh, about COVID-19. Uh, the second one there, I search COVID-19 portfolio is put out by the National Institute of Health, and they have expert curated sources for publications and preprints. And at the, Last time I looked at it, they had something like 127,000 publications there. Lit COVID is another example of uh, information hub. That's PubMed specifically, and they've curated uh, a literature hub of information about COVID as well. So the list goes on there. At the bottom, free collections. Um, what that is, and you can't see the whole list, but it's I just popped it up on the right hand side there. Uh, those are free publications. So a lot of the publishers, the main public there. So a lot of these resources, a lot of these resources um, also provide uh, the, uh, the information hubs provide, will provide their search strings uh, that they've used to create the searches for COVID and other specific topics. And this is in the same vein of uh, providing the literature. It's to get information as quickly as possible to researchers and, and so that we share the knowledge. We don't have to recreate these uh, search strings. So we've listed a couple at the bottom of the research resources there, the Medical Library Association and the Australia, Australian Library and Information Association. Um, 
if we go to the next screen here, this is the Medical Library Association. And what I've what they have here are various, lots of various searches here on different platforms like PubMed, Embase, or Ovid Medline. Uh, the one I've just uh, put the box around uh, is COVID-19 and anti-inflammatory drugs. So that would be a search string that's ready to go. You might want to look at it and make your own variations depending on your needs, but otherwise it's something you don't have to create from scratch. So on this page, you'll see lots of searches here for the different platforms and different topics with COVID. So that one is anti-inflammatory drugs. We also have ones for cancer here, critical care, uh, telemedicine, geriatrics, airway management, uh, re reusing PPE, uh, sepsis, dentistry, pediatrics, and so forth. So if you remember, we had that RSS feed on the previous page. Well, this is the search string, so it's just a basic COVID-19 and all the various uh, different names that are used in the literature for COVID-19, either keywords or uh, mesh headings. And this is a, uh, a search strategy that you could use to create your own alert. An alert, uh, for instance, you can create it in PubMed or you can create it in CINAHL or a different database. Uh, we have a few uh, quick videos on our web page and the URL is at the bottom here uh, that show you quickly how to set up alerts in PubMed and CINAHL. It's quite easy. Uh, PubMed, you would have to set up an NCBI or PubMed account. Uh, if you have one, then you would sign in with it. Uh, you would complete your search. You would grab one of those search strings uh, that's available to you from the various different sites. You could, after you complete your search, you click uh, create alert under the search box and at that point you can enter various parameters. So you would uh, certainly put in your email and you would select the frequency that you would like the new search results sent to you, whether it's daily or weekly, and you would save that uh, alert strategy. And then you will receive the alerts for the new results to the email, that email address that you provided. So the next category that we had have is COVID-19 for the public. Uh, we have various sites there listed in the top there under general resources. Uh, the Winnipeg Public Library, for instance, has great resources on information for Manitobans or uh, also to pull information from global resources. Uh, what I liked about their site is they had information about mental health and about also about talking to children about COVID-19. So this is an area that you could direct your clients if you require to. Uh, the next site, Province of Manitoba, obviously is a great, has great information for families to keep them up to date about COVID cases, vaccines, or screening tools. Uh, another one of the sites there, WHO, uh, WHO the World Health Organization, had, uh, you go to that site, it has advice for the public. And what I liked about that site is it had myth busters on there uh, about COVID-19. At the bottom there, we also have provided materials in other languages. If at any point you are viewing our web pages and you feel there's a resource that we've missed that you think should be on there, feel free to at any time make that suggestion. So we also have uh, the last category, which is COVID-19 books. We have a few books uh, on the topic. Again, I've uh, put at the bottom there a URL. If there are any purchases on COVID or any other topic, you can make a suggestion to the library to purchase it. And we will be happy to look into that for you. So here we have a few titles on COVID-19. All of the titles uh, of the books are hyperlinked. So you would just click on that. Uh, you'd be presented with a login page, so you need your WHA username and password. And if you ever forget your password, there is a reset option at that point. Uh, once you log in, it takes you to the record in our catalog. And then you look at the view it section. And if it has a link, and these ones would, it, they would have a, 
links there with the WRHA prefix. We are in the U of M catalog at that point, so anything that does not have WRHA in front of it is a U of M resource. So you, uh, these ones would either have something like WRHA EBSCOhost or WRHA ProQuest, and those are the links that you can click on. And then at that point, once you click on it, you might either, ha either have to open the item online or open a PDF. It uh, depends on which publisher uh, we're going into. I also wanted to talk about misinformation. Uh, so there is a lot of misinformation circulating about COVID-19, including proposed treatments that currently don't have any good evidence supporting them. We want to make sure that you rely on reputable sources to make your decisions about your health. So we've listed these three resources to teach you about how to uh, guide you through that process and do some critical thinking uh, about what resource you're looking at. And these three are listed under the public page. The last one there, information hygiene for the COVID-19 infodemic, is has a acronym called SIFT, Sifting Through the Coronavirus Pandemic. And I thought this was a good one uh, to just kind of keep in mind when you're looking at resources. So S is for stop and think before you share. I for investigate the source. So things like hovering over the URL, does it match what the site says? Is it a source that you know about? Is it a credible source? F is find better coverage if you're not sure about the information. Cross check it against recent news. And the T stands for trace claims, everything back to the original context uh, rather than to the quote that you're looking at. So that is our COVID-19 information. This is uh, an example of information that we've pulled together for our clients. We hope that it meets your needs. And at any time, you can let us know uh, that we, if we need to make changes, additions or deletions, we're happy to take that into consideration. We're building it for you uh, to use and hopefully it's a, a useful resource. So this was a quick one uh, show, talking about our, our um, COVID-19 resources. Uh, I'm available for any questions. Uh, while you're thinking of any questions, uh, we have our URL there uh, that we hope you're going to bookmark. Uh, we have our phone number and our email address, our general one, if you need to get a hold of us in a later time, uh, if you have questions. Uh, you have my email there as well, if you need to get a hold of me, and I would strongly suggest that you sign up for our WRHA Virtual Library newsletter. We've got a link there. Uh, that way you can keep up to date with what webinars are coming out, what new resources we have, what new books uh, we've acquired, so forth. So it, all that information is available, and anytime you see that symbol up at the top right there, ask us. If you're online, you can instantly chat with someone online if you're stuck with something or have a quick question. So not seeing any questions in the chat, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining us today. I uh, hope you have a great rest of the day and if you have any questions afterwards, you know how to contact us and we'll send out to the slide deck and the link to the video later this week. Have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.